Okay guys, so we got a no cooling call um, at a, a commercial property. We're gonna be looking at a rooftop unit today. So um, we're gonna get this thing, uh, gotta get a ladder set up at the back of the building, the riser room, the, they apparently don't have a code for it. So I'm um, gonna get a, a ladder, uh, get it set up, and we'll go up there and see what's going on with it. Just got up here, all carriers. D 106. Hear the compressor running. Yep. And motor's not. It tries again. Kicking out on high uh, high pressure. Be a low capacitor, your bad capacitor. All right, let's get this door off. See what we see. Well, first thing you see, can't the November 2015 five-year-old filters. Boy, let's see if we can do something about that. But that still uh, doesn't answer our complete question. Let's keep looking for that. Uh, electrical department. So it's going to be on this side. You usually can find, if you're not familiar with these, you usually can, uh, it's usually around where the, the disconnect is because it's feeding straight into it, but it's going to be this door right here on this carrier. So got a few screws to get out and we'll get this door off of it. All right, we took that door off. Now you just got this electrical uh, cover right here. It goes wherever, uh, where your electrical stuff is, it's going to be back behind that. So we're going to get that taken off and just visually looking at everything in here. The bowl doesn't look horrible, but it could definitely be cleaned. All right, we're going to get this door off. Ooh, there she is. That's going to be our um, capacitor right there for the fan. So let's get the power off this thing. have to take that bracket off to see what size it should be. Right, so this is a 5 UF. Zero point zero zero two. <clears throat> Definitely bad. It's not one that's swollen or anything like that, so it doesn't look as bad and not as obvious as they usually do. But it definitely happens. So let's get this swapped out, and we're gonna check this thing over, make sure there's no other work that needs to be done to it. Um, there's always a reason when you have a capacitor go out. There's always a reason it's going out. It doesn't just happen for no reason. So. Um, we're going to get this swapped out, get it running, check pressures, uh, check the airflow. We're going to check it off. So let me go grab a uh, capacitor and be right back. Got our new run capacitor. We're going to get this thing put on. Let's get this screw back on. Got it all plugged back in. All right. Let's get this thing kicked on. All right, so while we're waiting on it to kick back on, we're gonna go ahead and take this door off. This is where you get to the compressor and our uh, line should be, the service port should be right behind this door. So we're gonna get this taken off.
take a look. That's gonna be your high side hookup right here. And then this one, just, all you just follow it back and see where your suction is, head pressure, this the uh, suction line, liquid line. So you wanna follow that back to your port. Let's get our gauges on it. Our head pressure first right there. I'm gonna have to go back and uh, go inside. The uh, thermostat's gonna apparently reset, so we're gonna have to kick this thing back on. All right, we got it running. Just in case, sometimes it affects the the temperature or the charge and the way it looks. If you don't have the doors back on the in front of the compressor, so let's take a look at it. It's really bright up here. It is definitely dropping that suction line pressure by having that door on it. It does make a difference. So anything like this, or you got the old old school ream units that has the back door where the um, compressor is, you always want to put that back on it to get a complete accurate reading. A little bit of a high subcooling. I'll let it even back out after that door's been on it. I looked at the coil. The coil is um, it's getting good airflow through it. It's not very dirty. These don't usually get dirty very much just because they're out away from everything and just pulling in clean air. No, no grass, no stuff getting, you know, tossed around in the air and getting pulled in there. So I'm going to do a little more checking. We're going to see what the... RLA is on this system. Let's go ahead and get a, a check on what it is I'm pulling right now. Ten point eight. I'm sure that's going to be within range. Ten point four. One point five for the fan motor. All right, so this is our amp draw on the fan. It's rated uh, RLA is uh, one point five. We're at one point three. It's been steadily climbing. Um, it was at 1.05 when I first started checking it. So we're going to let this thing run a minute to see if the amps go up any. Check on that amp draw. It's already went up to 1.35 looks like. So we're going to check. Alright, so it's been about 15 more minutes. It's went up to 1.37 is the highest I've seen it yet. So believe that's going to be okay. Anytime you check everything and there should be no reason that capacitor went out, you always can uh, more than likely figure some type of power surge. Um, any, any type of deal like that, um, lightning at all, hit anywhere close, normally it'll fry just about everything, but more than likely power surges, uh, whenever you have a power surge, um, the first thing to always go is the capacitors. So just a just a capacitor. Everything's working good. I'll show you the charge one more time. It looks much better. 
So, subcooling and superheat, both dead on at 18. Our line temperature looks much better than it did. It was around 73, I believe, uh, for the suction line temp. But all in all, it looks uh, it looks really good. All right, guys. So that pretty much wraps it up. Um, just a capacitor. That's it. So move on to the next one. Hope y'all like the the change of scenery with the rooftop unit. Um, if anything else, maybe you just learn where, where everything is in the system. So, um, hope you liked it, and we'll uh, get started on another video soon.